Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear Leak Project, how the heck are you? First question, do you think that Baphomet is the devil? And do you think that the devil is Lucifer? And is Lucifer Satan? Also, with that being asked, with those questions being asked, what do you think about the uh, Sumerian cultures and the Egyptian, the Greek, the Hebrew, the Aztecs, the, the Mayans? Do they all have the same interpretation of the devil? And what did they call him? What did he look like? Who was he? What was his purpose? Well, first of all, as far as Baphomet goes, many people certainly think that Baphomet is the devil, is Lucifer. And I actually, at one point in my life, thought that also before I really started doing a lot of research outside of the Christian realms. Now, Baphomet looks kind of scary, right? I mean, you look at this being that's got boobs and has these dual snakes coming out of his pants. So you can tell he's definitely, or it is a hermaphrodite, androgynous being. Then you see these horns and this goat head and these wings. And you're like, well, looks like there's a sun and a moon. Looks like he's pointing up at the sun. Looks like he's pointing down at the moon. The sun's white. The, the moon's black. What does it all mean? How come the snakes have two different colors? How come the snakes that are intertwining coming out of his, you know, coming out of his pants towards where his, you know, his, his actions hanging out there. What is the point of all this? Is this really what the devil looks like? Is this, is this, is this your definition of the devil? I mean, when you think of the devil or Lucifer, do you think of Baphomet? And then if so, what do all the symbols mean? And what, what does everything represent? What does it really mean? And could Baphomet really be Pan? Well, there is some, some connection points there. I'll, there's a very bizarre piece of art that you can actually look at on Wikipedia that shows Pan having sex with the goat. And it says, Pan's having fun with the goat. It's like, what? But anyway, that's another story, another podcast, another day maybe. I'll think about it. I don't know. But you guys can look that up yourself. Pretty bizarre. But I'm going to tell you what each symbol represents, at least in my opinion, and many others. Now, I've been studying hermetics now pretty deep for, I'd say, about 12 years. And it's fascinating. It's absolutely incredible. You can actually link hermetics to teachings that go back through multiple cultures. And it, it connects physics, engineering, astronomy, and meditation. There's a whole bunch of various aspects to hermetics that I think is just incredible. And for those of you that have purchased the book by Franz Barden, Initiation into Hermetics, let me know what you think of it. It certainly is a trip. And you, you read that book just as a study point at first, and you're like, no way. No way can you do this stuff. And then you start practicing and start. It, it's incredible. I actually, I picked up my book, 90 Day Guide to Astral Projection again. And I'm going to go through that book again, step by step, one day at a time. And I'll share my experiences with you guys. And uh, anyway, but let's go back to Baphomet here and what Baphomet actually represents. So Baphomet, the Dark Lord. Is Baphomet really the Dark Lord? Well, I don't think so. Let me show you why. Here you go. This person did an excellent job. If you go to Encyclopedia Satanica. Well, here's another thing. I don't think it's Satan at all. I think it represents actually the entire cosmos in essence. Now, here's why. You've got the light, you've got the dark, you've got the animal aspect of the goat head. Then you have the human aspect of the human body. The darkness would represent the sun, or not the sun, the, the moon towards the bottom that he's pointing down. On the left, you also notice the sides as well. The left is pointing downwards, his fingers are pointing down. And then the right fingers, he has the two right fingers pointing upwards. So he's pointing upwards towards the light, towards the sun, pointing down towards the, the moon towards the dark, the yin, the yang, the alpha, the omega. It's the old concept. It's the duality that we live in, the, the dual construct. You've got the human essence of the human body. You've got the animal head, the goat head. You'll see that the, you know, if you were satanic, you might think that the pentagram on the forehead would be pointing downwards because if it's pointing upwards, that's actually more representative towards the heavenly desires. If it's pointing downwards, that's representation of the animal desires. That's why when you look at the horns of this of this deity of Baphomet. The horns actually represent the 
animal instincts, the earthly desires, the wants and needs and desires of this fleshly body that we're in. When you see the wings, the wings actually represent the angelic realms, the, the higher consciousness, the, the connection to heaven, to the higher realms. And let's, let's go back to this original art that was done by Mr. Uh, Levi. Uh, the, I can't remember his whole name off the top of my head. You guys know who I'm talking about here. Just go with me. And this guy, he's, he's autographed it there on the bottom. He, he was very knowledgeable in the occult, and certainly much of the information we have access to now, the Western esoterica, is from Mr. Levi himself. And when he drew this picture back, I think, 1611 is when it was drawn, you're going to see the pointing up, pointing down, the different color moons or the, the, the sun, the moon. You're going to see the internal flame. You're going to see the, the central point. The chakra, the crown chakra, represented in these seven archetypes, which we talked about earlier today. So then you're going to notice that if you look at this specific relic, or this piece of art, I should say, you notice how he's not sitting on a base that has an upside-down pentagram or anything that's satanic whatsoever. Now, many people that are satanic and study the left-hand path and practice the dark arts, they will use... Baphomet and certain symbols with that's linked to Baphomet, which is also linked throughout culture, Toth, uh, Quetzalcoatl. I'll get into many of these deities here in a moment, but let's talk about this for now. And it's just incredible how you can take something that could be used for good or evil, and then these organizations and institutions combined with the media will paint these nar uh, nasty dark pictures on things which don't represent that unless you want it to. You can absolutely take this and have it represent the dark and the evil and the wicked because there is that aspect to Baphomet. And there's also the aspect, there's, Baphomet encompasses the light and the dark in a metaphorical aspect, in a symbolic aspect. Now, whether or not Baphomet is an actual deity or just a symbolic representation of somebody wanting to understand things at the quantum level in a conscious sense as well as subconscious sense. And that's why, like I was talking about earlier today, when you look at these Sumerian tablets where these, they, they, pra they do these plays and, and dances and rites and songs and they link them to the stars and then they will take people that have high positions of power and give them that label of the stars so they'll mimic the stars and that is a form of magic. That is a form of invocation, invoking the essence of the stars in through yourself and harnessing that power. They still do that today in many of these um, buildings and, and layouts inside the buildings and feng shui. There's, there's a lot to it, folks. It doesn't mean it's dark. It's how do you take that energy? What do you do with it? Now, if where I'm going with this is if you look at that statue that they were going to uncover at the Oklahoma City courthouse that was of Baphomet, that was a satanic version of Baphomet, where the actual base, if, if my memory is correct, the base had the upside down pentagram and the representation of being satanic. And even the Church of Satan is more animalistic, in, it's more humanistic, I should say, than what you might think of as a, a church that was designed to worship certain deities. Now, that's a whole other podcast as well. This right here, though, what you're looking at is literally the representation of multiple archetypes in one image. And when Levi put this together, Eliphas Levi, he actually wasn't doing it as Satan or the devil. He was putting something together that people could actually look at and have a way to, to understand, basically. So let's go to... Back here, let's look at this. You'll see that there's also all the elements within Baphomet. You're going to see you've got the air, the fire, the earth, the water. You've got the sky. You've got the, you know, the male aspect, the feminine aspect. You've got the sky, the sea. It's all there. As above, so below. The white snake, the black snake, the air, the earth. Now, this is, this goes all the way back to the Arata people and before the predate the Sumerians by 20,000 years, you're going to see that these dual serpents that wind up together, that are lined up, are actually DNA. You can even break it down to the quad code. You can look at how these guys knew how to manipulate 
matter. They knew how to genetically manipulate beans, and that's one thing that they were really into. And I, I think it's very interesting when you connect the serpents, the dual serpents, which are supposed to be the devil, you link that with Baphomet, because you can see it definitely right there, the picture we were looking at just a minute ago. You, know, you got the, the DNA right there. Of course, you know, the your area where you, you know, have sex, that's how you create babies. So the, the DNA coming out of that area, that, that makes sense. But another thing that I find interesting is if you look at these ancient relics that go back thousands and thousands and thousands of years, it's also intertwining the duality. And, you know, Toth has much of the duality represented in, in many of the hieroglyphics, the hieroglyphs. And then here is, you probably haven't heard of this guy before, Hermonibus or Hermanibus. This is a combination of Hermes Trismegistus and Anibus together as, as one entity here. Look at this dude. And I think this is also kind of a, uh, a representation of Baphomet as well. That's why I wanted to show it to you guys because I, I hadn't heard of this entity until recently, Greek mythos. But Anibus, you know, the, the gatekeeper of the dead, of the underworld in conjunction with Hermes Trismegistus, the, the giver of knowledge and life and arts and writings and astronomy and astrology, etc. That's a very interesting deity that most people haven't heard of. Now, here is another representation of Toth, Satan, the devil, Enki, the serpent in the garden. You'll see on the left, you've got the dual serpents. And in the, the center there, you have Ninshi, uh, Ninsa. Then Saga, then Siga, and, <laughs> and then you've got to the right just the single snake. So ancient, ancient relics here, also connecting to Toth and Satan and the devil and the serpent of the garden. You know, they all intertwine here. And then that makes me think of the carbon atoms, the 666, the Gnostics representation of being in the flesh is actually, you know, something of the devil, something of an evil lower vibration some type of imprisonment to them because they talked about Adam, the first carbon copy, or the first copy, maybe not being carbon, <laughs> duh, 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 being a light sense, the first copy. Interesting, interesting. So what you're looking at right here is Isis in the center. And you'll see Toth to the right, and you'll see two other gods, deities to the left. I think it's Osiris. And looks like you've got the helmet of Ra throughout. You've also got Toth as the baboon on the top as the helmet. And you'll notice the serpents underneath all three of them except for Isis. But Isis is actually holding the constellations of it looks like Leo and the scorpion constellation. It's dual serpents within her hands. So she's holding them, not standing on top of them. And it seems as if this is some type of like ritual where she's actually harnessing the energies of these deities. And I find it interesting because usually Toth is as big or bigger than the other deities. And in this specific hieroglyph, Isis is the one in the center, the one that's absorbing all this power. It looks like all the power is going into her. And also you'll see the, the eye of Horus. You'll see various crown chakras. You'll see the, the cross of eternal life, the Ak, or the, what's it called? The Akra, right there in the top left. This is a very interesting hieroglyph, I think. And I think that this is in representation of possibly some type of, some type of like a ritual, definitely a ritual. And I'm thinking of the vibrational powers that these Egyptians had access to and what they were able to do with certain frequencies. That to me was probably a way for Isis to like literally just absorb and obtain all sorts of godly like powers and and just imagine the things that she could do as she's absorbing powers of toth and different gods and archetypes and planets and stars and the serpents all coming into her as the center it reminds me of that movie that just came out where they were genetically manipulating people and some of them looked you know could do just amazing things and other ones they they kind of didn't come out right so they kind of just threw them out or got rid of them and they were also linking their brains to computers and just absorbing all this information and then you would have networks of people that were absorbing information from other people and then you'd have a pr somebody above them absorbing all of their information from all 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 their information and then they're just like boom 
They've just got all this power. And, you know, I think of these parasitic archon entities that possibly have learned how to harness these powers by using us to create these technologies for them. They're literally working through us, the people. You know, think about it. Let's, let's jump off topic here for a minute. What about how we've discussed before very intelligent people building nuclear reactors over very sensitive areas of the world that are, you know, fault lines, high levels of seismic activity. Yes, they put them next to rivers for water so they can continue to keep water to keep the, uh, the reactors cool enough so they don't go into meltdown. And but you'll notice that it seems if you overlay the maps of areas that have high levels of seismic activity, it seems like they, they strategically picked these areas that are prone to earthquakes. It's just bizarre. So maybe there's something whispering in their ear like Ares was in Wonder Woman when, he's like, when he fights Wonder Woman at the end and he's like, guess what? I didn't do this. I just whispered in these guys' ear. They decided to do it because they can't see me. They can't even really hear me, but they can kind of hear me because the inner ear hears me. So what level are we at right now? How much time do we have left before this planet is just completely usurped up by these freaking Borg, anti-life, anti-biology archetypes? You know, let's think about, let's go to the planet killer hypothesis for a minute. Do you guys believe that there could be entities and archetypes and deities out there that can literally kill planets, that can destroy entire solar systems? And what happens if these deities and these entities, let's just call them angels, fallen angels, let's say these angels, angles, archons, serpents, let's say these things get so powerful that they start usurping up entire quadrants, entire galaxies to, to just feed themselves. When do we run out of real estate? When do they start going into other dimensions and absorbing other dimensions for their own pleasure, for their own manifestations, absorbing enormous amounts of energy? And think of, think of a deity that could absorb an entire galaxy in one, you know, one swallow, one bite, and the entire galaxy and everything within it is now a part of that. You know, it reminds me of a, a great well, a great blue well, eating a bunch of plankton or something like that, right? Well, imagine this gray well gets so big and it gets so out of whack and it's so off balance and it's so narcissistic that it's completely lost any balance whatsoever, or any network of self, and it's just completely out of control and it just starts absorbing the universe. Then what? And what about planets like Mars that look like at one point they could, it could have been just like Earth? Now... It looks like it had the crap kicked out of it. it. Looks like, you know, I mean, you link Mars to the god of war, the the Greek mythos, the Egypt. I mean, there's so much there, ladies and gentlemen. Yet, how far does it go? I mean, people think you're a conspiracy theorist if you talk about technologies that aren't available yet. Imagine talking about a smartphone or an Android phone 50 years ago or 100 years ago. You might be looked at as crazy. Yet, I can show you a beautiful relic that was made in Mexico 800 years ago, 700 to 800 years ago, maybe even longer, maybe 1,200 years ago, that looks like a spaceship with a reptile riding the spaceship. I mean, it's crazy. The reptile is like, woo, yeah! And it's like, you know, I mean, so is there anything new under the sun? All right, so let's, let's go with this now. Let's, let's move on. That was my question of the day. Are there such things as planet killers, solar suckers, energy sources? You know, these... Think of what we can do now as a whole that we couldn't do 100 years ago or that we didn't do 100 years ago, at least that we know about. Let's go, let's go to this for a minute. I am speaking to the entire planet right now from my garage. I am talking to people all over the world from my garage. I don't even have air conditioning in my garage, but I can talk to people from all over the world. How cool is that? So think about it. We have opportunities, ladies and gentlemen. Every single day, we have a new opportunity to change the world and hopefully for the better. So let's go to this next image here. This is another hieroglyph of Toth and Osiris 
riding the serpents, riding the cosmic serpents, you will see that Toth is larger than Osiris in this image with the dual eye. Interesting how you see two eyes here, folks, and not just one, not just not just one eye. So you can't say it's satanic because there's two of them. Or does that mean the devil's looking at you through both eyes? People give me a hard time about my logo that I came up with for Leak Project, which is nothing new under the sun, but it certainly wasn't the eye of the devil. And people are like, dude, you're Illuminati, man. You, you're a 37th degree Jesuit Smurf order, bro. I know it because I can see you shapeshift. You know, people tell me they see me shapeshift on air. It's crazy. So anyway, you've got, I would never do that. So you've got two eyes in both directions. I think that's a cool picture right there. That is an awesome image. And the more research we do, the less, the more research I do anyway, the less I know. It's crazy how that works. The more I know, the less I know. Quiesel Coddle. Quiesel Coaddle. This dude was possibly Toth, possibly Satan, possibly the serpent, possibly just your cosmic DNA manipulator, Enki, Loki, the trickster himself, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You've got an ancient Aztec relic where it looks like this dude, oh my goodness, he has the bucket of life in the palm of his hand. He, he is holding the Anunnaki power pack. The genetic material that manipulated mankind. It's right there, folks. Where's the pine cone? Well, he's riding the serpent, and that serpent looks like it's pissed. Or maybe it's just like, Hey, what's up? We're going on a ride. They're going, they're going to ride the wave, the cosmic wave. Oh, wait. i got to be serious. I don't want to piss people off. Okay. Here he is again, ladies and gentlemen. Wrapped. You can see he is wrapped inside of the the serpent this time it's a feathered serpent and I find this ironic because it looks like an incubation thing where he's like you know he comes out as like he's like Ugh! he's like Superman himself you know he's like Doctor Who coming out of the uh, the phone booth and there's so many relics that show the serpents wrapped around these deities not inside the deities, but wrapped around the deities. Ooh, I got another theory here for you, folks. Take this to the bank. I don't know if you'll get anything for it, but they might kick you out, actually. But anyway, what if the serpents actually are the archons that you don't see? The angles. The fallen angels, angles connection that's talked about. 666, six, six, carbon, uh, carbon atoms, six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, the mark of man, the number of man in, in Revelation, six threefold. The Gnostics thought that matter, the ultimate demon, the mother of all demons was matter. Now, demon, demon, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, where's, where do we end with the labels here? And this is where we get in more trouble with the labels that we connect. Or with the, with the thoughts that come into our mind when somebody says a specific word that has a particular label on it. So we think of them maybe, you know, when they say a particular word, doesn't mean they don't know what it means, but they might have a different interpretation on it. I mean, even most words have multiple definitions, right? So imagine what it was like 5,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, 20,000 years ago. Well, when there was a point when we were communicating with our minds, not using labels, but just knowing, that's when... I feel there was a lot less division. That's when there probably were there probably weren't wars of ma you know weapons of mass destruction and utter chaos. I think that once we stopped communicating telepathically, that was something that created this chaos. And when you hear order out of chaos, people that can actually understand how chaos works and understand the different pa patterns and sacred geometry and sequences within this chaos itself, well then those are the masters now of their own universe and the universe of others because they can manipulate other people as well based on the knowledge they have and that people don't. Why do you think religions want you to be ignorant? Why do you think most religions say ignorance is bliss? Because they don't want you to know. They want you to stay stuck in the matrix. And I will also share something with you that I was thinking about the other day. My memory from when I was, when I was a real little kid sometimes is just, it's awesome. I, mean, I can remember stuff from when I was in the crib way back when. 
And sometimes my short-term memory isn't that good just because I'm doing so much research and, and hitting on so many cylinders, I feel. And anyway, but the, the old school stuff, I remember when I was, I was literally just a few years old because the, I was at my aunt's house. And at the time, the place that she lived in, I, would, I, I couldn't have been older than five years old. And I remember that there were, okay, so my aunt had some friends over and their friends had kids as well. And one of the, one of the kids was 10 months old and he was walking and they were bragging about how he was walking at 10 months. And I remember talking to the kid, but then I go back and think about it. I, I wasn't, I couldn't have been talking to him like I'm talking to you now because the kid was 10 months. And I remember commuting, like, it was like, I remember communicating with him and these other kids there that were, I, I mean, I don't remember how old they were. They would have been my age or younger. And, you know, it was just, it's very interesting when you start having some of those old memories and, and connecting the dots and thinking about how even certain points in your life, you can have those telepathic experiences. Uh, <laughs> I remember this one time I was able to read somebody's mind at the dinner table and it was totally by accident. And it wasn't like I read, I didn't read her mind. I heard her mind. I literally heard her thoughts and she confirmed it and it freaked her out. And anyway, it was just, it was just bizarre. She, um, she's never thought the same about me since then, but, uh, it, it was, it was pretty fascinating. So it doesn't happen all the time. Every once in a while, little things like that come up. But you know, my point is we really need to think more about how to understand people better because even these words can create so much division and so many, um, so many problems and issues and opportunities. And I even think about Credo Mutua, and I don't know a whole lot about him, but I certainly have heard his stories that he's talked about um, describing the ancient people of Africa and how at one point they were one being. They were androgynous, and if they wanted to eat, they, I mean, they, they could literally telepathically communicate with, with animals and plants and everything else, and the animals would literally go to them and bow, and, and you know, they would eat the animal. So then I think, what was it like before that? Were we all like just drinking light sodas and, and light milkshakes and, 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 and light caviar and light legs and stuff like that instead of crab legs, light legs, you know, like literally light from the sun? I don't know. I mean, but these stories have symbolic meanings and I, let's go back to the Credo Mutua story here for a minute when he discussed how the, the beings that came from the stars to Earth that manipulated the original androgynous beings, and even the Gnostics talked about the androgynous beings, guys. I mean, it's bizarre. So I guess the Anunnaki got something right. At least they, at least they did split us up. So <laughs> anyway, hello. You know, I mean, wouldn't it be kind of boring if you just had to have fun with yourself all the time? I'm just saying. I mean, anyway. But uh, where was I going with this? So, yeah, Credo Mutua. I digress. Credo Mutua is discussing how the people, back in the day, before they were manipulated by these, these fallen angels, by these Anunnaki, by these Akkadians, before they were manipulated, before they manipulated earthlings, they had a choice. They could go to, to one. There was like two different areas that they could go in. There was one to the left and one to the right. The one to the left was, I think, a, a blue mountain, and the one to the right was like a, a green, no, it was, it was red and blue, if I remember this right. The, the, le, the colors don't matter as much as the symbology behind the story. So these beings, the human beings that were originally androgynous, they went in, they, they split them up. They were these gods that came down, these angels that came down, the beings that came down, offered them specific abilities and treasures and rights if they wanted to go split themselves up. So they decided to do it. They were tricked. And once they came out, they were separated. You had the male and the female. And that's why a lot of people of ancient times talk about how you have a, a, a twin flame and how why you're always feeling like you're, you know, once you're married, you're complete. So, or once you find your partner, you're complete. So I, I can definitely see some of the symbolism in this. And it makes me think about maybe they're taking these stories about how when the original copy of Ad, when, when Adam was originally produced, the original earth being, maybe there was some truth to that. And maybe they decided to manipulate and continue to manipulate for their own gain because they realized of all the abilities that Adam actually had, the first human one. Hugh 
man, once they did it. Now, whether or not this is true, I don't know. I can, I can certainly, I can speculate just like you guys can, although I feel like I've done enough research into the fields that I'm discussing with you to, to present a valid discussion and information point. So let's go to this image right here. Quizel Coatl, another image. You can see that he is holding the the serpent staff, the, the dual helix. Then you're going to see here another one of the infamous serpent, the the feathered serpent. All right, now now we're going to get into Wikipedia for a minute. Now Wikipedia, I'm just using this as a reference point because it's an easy way to get a whole bunch of stuff together and. I cross-link all my references, folks, so this is just something that's nice. And Actually, whoever put this article together on Wikipedia, there's some great images here of many of these horned deities that were really looked up to in Greek mythos, Roman mythos, Egyptian, Sumerian, and then there's, that, there's even that creepy one of Pan. So, um, <laughs> look at this dude. Look at this dude. I'm listening to some Rage Against the Machine right now. You know that song that goes, Blank you, I won't do what you tell me. Boom! I just want to start jamming out, you guys. You, don't, you have no idea. I just want to... No, 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 no. All right, here we go. Boom! Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Playing the flute. Got the hooves going down. All right, here you go. Here you have... The goddess, Hathor. And, of course, the elongated skull bean. Look at that. They're happy. I mean, they're happy. They're having a good time. They care about each other. That's all that matters. Now, here is Isis with horns. You're going to see Isis has horns right here. Doesn't mean she's evil. Doesn't mean she's wicked. I mean, she has upgraded to official going to the other side and coming back status, which is pretty incredible. And then she was cloned, or not cloned, but she was brought back to life via DNA technologies, you know, with Anki and, and pretty wild. But here's another very interesting deity with the horns. Here we go again. I mean, he doesn't look that pissed. He looks like he's pretty happy. He looks like a normal guy, you know, just got some horns growing on the side of his head. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, just because you have horns, does that mean you're evil? What do you guys think? <laughs> So anyway, um, this is this is what I got, folks. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you, all of you that joined me here live. And I also want to appreciate the moderators for being here, helping the, the chat area stay pretty stable. So thank you very much. Also, be excellent to each other, ladies and gentlemen. And pick up one of those quick bivy sacks. What in the heck are you guys waiting for? People have asked me before, what is a quick bivy, Rex? Well, the link is in the video description box. If you have a phone, it might not work on your phone. It'll definitely work on your computer. They're cheap. They fit in the palm of your hand. They weigh a few ounces. And you pull this thing out, and if you get in an area where you need to stay warm, you can cover your body in this thing. You can sleep in it. You can stay awake in it. You can even, look, uh, you can even play on your phone inside of this thing, so you can be like, you know playing words with friends or something like that while you're on there. It's great. So pick one up. Give one to a friend or family member. And also check out GetTheTea.com. Seriously. GetTheTea.com has some amazing health supplements. You guys will love it. They got stuff for energy. <laughs> they have stuff for detox. They have stuff for your skin. They have stuff for your digestive system. They have stuff for your immune system. And it's, very, it's really high-quality products. That's what I like about it because there's so many different companies out there that offer different products, some that are real expensive, some that are cheap, some that are medium-priced. And I would say that Get the Tea, their prices are – they're either in the middle or right, right above the middle. And the quality is top of the line. The quality is second to none. So I've, I've been in the alternative health community – you know, like researching on vitamins and supplements and, and taking many myself now for 15 years. And I think Get the Tea is definitely the best. So that's why I work with them. And also, become a premium member at leakproject.com and help support the cause. 10 bucks a month, 50 bucks a year. Also, just watching these shows here on YouTube, the live shows also, 
thank you for watching the podcast. That definitely helps the show grow as well. Make sure to like us. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to share us on all the different social platforms. And there's a lot of different alternative news forums out there that get really good traffic. So if you guys ever want to share these videos on those alternative news forums, that'd be great because I don't have time to do it. And if I did, then I think we'd get a lot more views. It's just, I guess I shouldn't say I don't have time to do it. I'm taking that time and putting it towards other things. So like bringing you guys more content. There you go. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Be the change you want to see. Weekproject.com. Nanny, 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 nanny.